Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have covered single phase, full wave, control rectifier and we have derived some important parameter like output voltage of single phase full wave control bridge rectifier as well as we have seen the Fourier series of source current. Okay, now whatever the parameter I derived in single phase full wave control bridge rectifier that can be applied for uncontrolled rectifier also only you have to put alpha is equal to zero if you will put alpha is equal to zero then you can find all the parameters related to single phase full wave uncontrolled rectifier okay now in this lecture we will start single phase full wave semi controlled rectifier in which we will see the symmetrical configuration okay so let us move to the first slide see this is the symmetrical configuration this is also a bridge rectifier having two thyristor and two diode and why it is known as symmetrical I will let you know after some time first see here one thyristor and one diode are connected in one leg T1 and this is D4 okay this is T1 and this is T3 and this is D2 so we can say that T1 D4 are connected in one leg similarly T3 D2 are connected in one leg means two thyristor and two diode are connected like this now input voltage I have given that is Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t and I am assuming here that load current is constant this is the assumption means in at any time we are getting load current see here load current is constant see the waveform of load current this is the waveform of load current here load current is constant for all time this is the assumption now what will happen if you will apply input voltage V is equal to Vm sin omega t in this circuit. See this Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t also I can write this is Vab okay and Vba I can write that is equal to minus Vm sin omega t. This has been explained in previous lecture okay. So this is the waveform of Vab that is the input voltage Vm sin omega t. This is pi and this is 2 pi and this is the waveform of minus Vm sin omega t that is Vba okay. Now see here from alpha to pi what is happening see from alpha I am triggering this is the alpha omega t is equal to alpha I am triggering T1. So if I will trigger the T1 then the equivalent circuit will look like this see here if I will trigger T1 at omega t is equal to alpha then what will happen this T1 will be sorted and this A point is now in plus because VAB Vm sin omega t at omega t is equal to alpha Vm sin omega t is positive so VAB will be positive this is connected with minus so if this will sorted this T1 will be sorted means this terminal will be positive okay and this terminal will be negative so in this case this D2 will go into the forward bias see the anode potential of D2 is connected with plus terminal so D2 will go into the forward bias so in this case T1 D2 will starts conducting okay and output voltage I will get that is equal to VAB apply KVL here you will get output voltage is equal to VAB that is equal to Vm sin omega t means output voltage will follow the input voltage from alpha to pi okay now what will happen after pi after pi that is from pi to pi plus alpha I am talking about from pi to pi plus alpha see from pi to pi plus alpha I am not triggering this thyristor T3 T3 is triggered at pi plus alpha so after pi supply voltage is going to be reversed okay and here the load current is constant means load current has to flow and we are not triggering T3 T3 is not triggered at pi so what will happen this D4 and T1 will start freewheeling this is D4 and this is T1 and this is the output voltage so after pi that is pi from pi to pi plus alpha supply voltage is going to be reversed and we are not triggering t3 and we are assuming that load current is constant means load current has to flow so after pi this t1 and d4 will starts conducting and this, this d2 will turn off why this d2 will turn off because after pi the supply voltage is going to be reversed means this b terminal is connected to plus and this a terminal will be negative after pi so the cathode potential of this d2 is positive so this d2 stops conducting and now the current will flow from d4 and t1 so i can say that t1 and d4 starts freewheeling after pi is it fine so from alpha to pi t1 d2 will conduct and after pi supply voltage is going to be reversed means b will be positive and a point will be negative so in this case d2 will go into the reverse bias and it will be open circuited so after pi 
T1 and D4 will conduct and it will start swiveling from pi to pi plus alpha. So in this case, what will be the output voltage? Output voltage will come out to be zero. So you can see here that from alpha to pi, output voltage will follow the input voltage. And in this case, I, uh, the T1 and D2 will conduct. Okay. And from pi to pi plus alpha means this range T1 and D4 free wheels. Okay. Now what will happen after pi plus alpha? We are triggering T3 from pi plus alpha to 2 pi we are triggering t3 means in this case t3 d4 will starts conducting so i will get output voltage v0 is equal to vba that is equal to minus vm sin omega t is it fine draw the equivalent circuit you will understand that this t3 and d4 will conduct after pi plus alpha because at pi plus alpha t3 is triggered so the moment when you trigger the T3, then this T1 will go into the reverse bias and it will be open circuited. So output voltage we will get from T3 D4 that is equal to VBA. If you will make equivalent circuit, then you will get V0 is equal to VBA. So after pi plus alpha, you can see that V0 will follow the VBA like this and it will, it will follow till 2 pi. And in this case, which, which one is conducting? T3 and D4 is conducting. Okay, now see here, if I'll have to draw the waveform of source current, this is source current. Okay, so how the source current will look like? See, from alpha to pi, which one is conducting? T1 and D2 is conducting. So if I will draw the equivalent circuit, then the source current, the direction of source current will, will look like this and it will pass through T1. Then this is I0, then this is load and this is D2, T1 and D2 are conducting like this so you can say that i naught the direction of i naught and source current are same from alpha to pi so source current will be is is equal to i naught okay from pi to pi plus alpha which one is conducting t1 and d for free wheels we have seen earlier so t1 and d4 will free wheels means the load current will free wheel through this t1 and d4 like this i0 will free will this is i0 so i0 current will free will from t1 and d4 so source current in this case source current will be zero is is will be zero because it is sorted i1 will follow the sorted pass so i will not get the source current so from pi to pi plus alpha source current will be zero okay now what will happen after pi plus alpha so from pi plus alpha to 2 pi Again, which one is conducting? T3 and D4 is conducting. So if T3 and D4 will conduct, then this is source current IS and this is connected with A. Now D4 is conducting. So this is D4, this is point B, this is T3. This will be somehow like this. And this is I0. Now you can see that this I0 is flowing opposite to the source current. See here. So I will get IS is equal to minus of I0. So from pi plus alpha, this is pi plus alpha to 2 pi, I am getting minus I0. Okay. And from alpha to pi, I am getting plus I0. And in, the, in between pi to pi plus alpha, I will get source current is equal to 0. Same operation is done before that is lecture number 12 in full wave controlled bridge rectifier. I found the source current there like this approach only. So here the source current I am getting from alpha to pi and then from pi plus alpha to 2 pi. Now see what is the conduction angle of thyristor. You can see in output voltage waveform from alpha to pi T1 D2 is conducting and from pi to pi plus alpha also T1 D4 is conducting. So if I will have to find the conduction angle of thyristor T1 then thyristor T1 will conduct from alpha to pi plus alpha. So this is the conduction angle of thyristor T1, IT1, I will get from alpha to pi plus alpha. Okay, so conduction angle of thyristor, I will get pi. Now see the conduction angle of diode. From alpha to pi, see the output voltage waveform. From alpha to pi, D2 is conducting. So D2 is conducting from alpha to this is pi. This is pi, okay. From alpha to pi, D2 is conducting. Now after pi, D4 is conducting and it will continue to conduct till 2 pi. So this is the conduction angle of 
d2 and after pi d4 is conducting and it will continue till 2 pi see here it will continue till 2 pi this is 2 pi okay now what will happen after 2 pi after 2 pi again this t3 d2 will free wills this is the after 2 pi again this t3 d2 will free wills so after 2 pi also for 2 pi plus alpha d2 is conducting is it fine so at a steady state i can say that d2 is conducting from 0 to pi and d4 is conducting from pi to 2 pi so conduction angle of diode will come out to be pi see here the conduction angle of thyristor and conduction angle of diode are equal that's why it is known as symmetrical configuration in symmetrical configuration conduction angle of diode and conduction angle of thyristor are equal in all the semi control device that is the symmetrical asymmetrical and full converter with free willing diode output voltage the waveform of output voltage and waveform of source current are same okay only the difference in conduction angle of diode and thyristor we will get different conduction angle in diode and thyristor in all the three configuration that is symmetrical configuration asymmetrical configuration and full converter with free willing diode so i will not derive the v naught and is right now i will only find the conduction angle of diode and thyristor in symmetrical configuration after completing this full converter with free willing diode i will find the average output voltage and source current okay in this way we can plot the output voltage waveform source current waveform thyristor current waveform as well as diode current waveform so in symmetrical configuration the conduction angle of diode and thyristor are same that is equal to pi okay and the uh, average output voltage i will find after covering all the semi converter because in all the semi converter average output voltage and source current both are same okay now if i'll have to find that this is point number one this is point number two and if i'll have to find the circuit turn of time then how will i find for circuit for finding the circuit turn of time we see the time for which thyristor is in reverse bias see the thyristor current that is thyristor current we are getting from alpha to pi plus alpha means thyristor is sorted from alpha to pi plus alpha and it is conducting from alpha to pi plus alpha what will happen after pi plus alpha after pi plus alpha this t1 will go into the reverse bias and it will continue till in reverse bias till 2 pi okay after 2 pi it will go into the forward blocking mode but we have to find the circuit turn of time so to find the circuit turn of time we see the time for which thyristor is in reverse bias so from pi plus alpha to 2 pi this thyristor t1 will be in reverse bias so omega tc is equal to 2 pi minus pi plus alpha okay so omega tc i will get pi minus alpha so tc will come out to be pi minus alpha upon omega okay now the thyristor current i am getting from alpha to pi plus alpha okay and diode angle diode conduction angle also i am getting from alpha to pi plus alpha i can shift the diode current from alpha to pi plus also alpha also at a steady state we are getting from 0 to uh, 0 to pi so in nut and cell i can say that the conduction angle of thyristor and conduction angle of diode are same that is equal to pi so what will be the it average the it average is equal to i naught into conduction angle is pi upon 2 pi that is equal to i naught by 2 okay similarly it rms i can find like i naught under root pi conduction angle upon time period 2 pi that is equal to i naught by root 2 id average will come out to be i naught by 2 and id rms will come out to be i naught by root 2 here id average and it average both are same because conduction angle of thyristor and conduction angle of diode are same in symmetrical configuration so you have to keep in mind this because question can be framed from this formula then what is the average value of thyristor what is the rms value of thyristor current what is the average value of diode current what is the rms value of diode current okay so that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will see single phase full wave semi controlled in asymmetrical configuration that is the second one okay if you guys understood the concept then please like this video for doubt solving you can join our facebook group thanks for watching this video